spreadsheet errors remain a major problem for those relying on Excel generated reports and analyses. These errors can manifest themselves in many ways, including incorrect use of Excel functions, improper cell references, and data input errors. Fortunately, you can use Excel's data validation tool to minimize the opportunity for incorrect data input, and in this tip, you will learn how to work with data validation rules. To begin to demonstrate the power of building data validation rules, consider the loan amortization schedule currently on screen. In this loan amortization worksheet, you would like to restrict the values that a loan origination officer can enter when creating the amortization schedule. More specifically, you would like to insert the following rules. The loan amount must be between $100,000 and $500,000. The interest rate must be in the range of 2% to 6%. And the term of the loan must be either 10, 15, 20, 25, or 30 years. To ensure that the worksheet meets the three rules outlined above, begin by clicking in cell D4 and then clicking from the Data tab of the ribbon, Data Validation, to open the Data Validation Rule dialog box. On the Settings tab, in the Allow box, from the drop-down list, choose Whole Number. In the Data box, choose Between, and then specify a minimum value of $100,000 and a maximum value of $500,000. Note that these could be cell references if desired. On the Input Message tab, enter a message that prompts the user to enter the correct value. In this case, we enter, please enter loan amount as the title of the input message, and then we enter, please enter the principal amount of the loan Note that the amount must be between $100,000 and $500,000 per bank policy. If the customer is seeking an amount outside of this range, contact the branch vice president as the input message. Finally, click on the Error Alert tab to indicate what happens if the policy is violated. When entering an Error Alert message, you have three options. The first is Stop. If you choose this option, the user absolutely cannot enter a value that is outside of the established tolerances. The second option is a warning. If you choose this option, the user can enter a value that is outside the established tolerances, but has to confirm the intention to do so. And third, you can also enter an information message. If you choose this option, Excel will display a message indicating that the value is outside the established tolerances but will still allow the user to accept the value without confirmation. Of course, for maximum control, choose the Stop option. Upon indicating the type of error alert you wish to generate, enter a title and an error message. Both of these will be similar to the input messages entered on the previous tab. In this example, we've established invalid loan amount as the title, and for the error message we are indicating, according to bank policy, the loan amount must be between $100,000 and $500,000. If you have questions, please contact your manager. Clicking OK causes the data validation rule to save with the worksheet. Now notice that whenever a user clicks in cell D4, the user is prompted with the input message specified in the data validation rule setup. If a user enters a value that's within the tolerances, say $200,000 for example, then of course Excel accepts the entry. However, if the user enters a value that's outside the tolerances, let's say $50,000 in this example, then notice that the error message pops up and of course Excel is rejecting the entry. The process for building a data validation rule to ensure that any interest rate a user enters into the amortization schedule is in the allowable range of 2% to 6% is virtually identical to that described for the data validation rule associated with the loan amount. In order to ensure that the interest rate remains within that range, once again from the Data tab of the ribbon, we will choose Data Validation, and on the Settings tab, 
we will indicate this time that we want to allow decimal entries only. And the decimal entries must be between the value of 0 0.02 and 0 0.06. Of course, we would also specify an appropriate input message and error alert. Clicking OK will cause this data validation rule to save. In addition to using data validation rules for ensuring the accuracy of user input, you can also build data validation rules to make it easier for users to enter data. For example, you can build a data validation rule to provide a drop-down list from which users can select a value to enter into their worksheet. To build such a rule, click on the cell that you wish to apply the rule to, in this case cell D6 for loan period and years. Choose Data Validation from the Data tab of the ribbon, and choose a list. Now for the entries in the list, we can either specify those in the source box, or we could point and click to cells in the Excel workbook that contain the entries. For the sake of expediency, we'll just enter those list items now. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, and 30 years, according to bank policy. Once again, we would also enter an appropriate input message and error alert. Upon clicking OK, the data validation rule is saved. Now notice with the data validation rule saved, whenever a user clicks in cell D6, they receive a drop-down arrow option, and upon clicking on the drop-down arrow, they now are allowed to choose from only entries that meet bank policy, in this case choosing a 20-year term for the loan. Data validation is certainly not a new feature in Excel, but it is one that most users have likely not used in the past. With data validation, you can create rules to help ensure that users enter accurate data into your workbooks, and you can also create drop-down lists to make it easier for users to record their entries. If you are looking for ways to improve spreadsheet accuracy while simultaneously easing the burden of data input, give Excel's data validation feature a try. On behalf of everyone at K2 Enterprises, thanks for taking time to watch this video tip. For more information on the training courses we offer, please visit our website at www.k2e.com.